is up and look to God. God will guide. He will direct. Don't look to what we are seeing. Don't look at the obstacles, the situation, or the circumstances. Look to God. He said, keep our focus and keep our eyes on him. And he will direct our path. And God will. So blessings again to all the fathers and much love. And may God continue to guide every step, every area of your life. And may he continue to be with you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us put our hands together for Brother Edwards again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. At this time, we will have Brother Terry to come and minister to the men with his saxophone. Let us put our hands together as Brother Terry comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, that was for me. Let's give Jesus a hand clap. Um, give me the key of G, all right? G major. You know, um, the Bible say that we overcome by the word of our testimony. I came to this church maybe about... Um, five years ago was down on the other side and ministered. About three weeks ago, you know, I had something happen to me in my life that I'm not ready to testify about that until God is ready for me. But I was driving up looking for a church I met that um that brother over there a long time ago and he told me the church moved but I didn't know where the church moved and I drive up and down up and down looking for a church there was some Methodist church and some different churches I pulled in and pulled out and I just went there and on the other side by the park and I walked in here Broken. Broken. And Pastor Joel was preaching the word, walk into your Goliath. I don't know him, never heard of him, know him from a can of paint. And being broken. never done this and I'm not ashamed to talk I've never done this I walked to the front and he prayed for me and he prayed for me and he never knew me and he said where God is going to take me the anointing on my life and the gift that I had he didn't know what I'd do God have given me for music to teach and to do play different instrument. And when you have a call in your life, the devil will set you up. And if you think you are too big, he will break you down. And I'm standing here. He said, God, the word said he looked for a broken spirit and a contrite heart that will God look for. And I know God is not through with me yet. I am not a female, but I am a father. And I saw when my daughter was born. When a woman is given birth, she cries, she do whatever. But when that baby comes, she forgot all about the pain. And she take that child and hold the child. So I know from true pain, there's a birthing. And I know God is not with me yet. Yeah. 
I just want to say a little piece of this song before I minister. You know, there is something about the old songs. And you can join me. There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing His word. It sounds like music in my ear. It is the sweetest name I know of the one. Sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. How I love Jesus. Stand and hear me sing. Because he first. Help me sing the song. Love me. And oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh. How I love Jesus, cause he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, oh how I love Jesus. Because he first loves me. Thank you, Jesus.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Brother Terry, for that wonderful song. As we His word. Let us pray this morning. Father, this morning I praise you. I thank you, God, Father, for this awful, pri awesome privilege to share your word. I pray, God, Father, that you touch my tongue. Help me to speak your word with clarity, Lord. I come against the spirit of fear yes. and every foul spirit that has been arrayed against me. I pray, God, Father, that you use me all to your honor and glory to thee. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 My question today, you know the Bible says that, it says, husbands, love your wife, even as Christ loved the church and gave his life for it. But, you know, I want my question to the fathers today. What kind, what type of father are you? You see, as a man who has been in the workplace over 40 years, I've met with all kind of men. A man once, you know, once I uh, 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 there's an old guy. He, he came to us, work by us, and older than me, well, I'm much older. And one day, the guys on work getting, had start talking with him, and I asked him, by calling my name, and I said, you have any children? And he said, yes. And he gave a number, and then followed up by saying, I never mind any of them. And I say, Lord, what kind of statement is this? You see, I think he lived the life of a, a bird. You ever, ever look at a bird? The bird comes into your gova tree. And he picks a hole in the gova. And then he scoops out all the seed. And he flies away. And on his way, he gets an urge. So he drops some seed. Continue flying, he drops some more seed. And as, 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 as long as he flies and goes, he'll drop some seed. And some would catch. Some won't. You understand? And that is, that, that is the kind of life he lived. He drops seeds all over the place. Never looking back. Never paying attention. Never, you know, a farmer... When he plants a garden, he tends to that garden. He will water it. He would mold it. He would make sure that no weed takes it over. But you, a man, just drop your seed and go on. Leave it for whoever, the mother to suffer with. And this morning I am saying, that is not the, that that is no plan. That was never the plan of God. There are other men who believe that when they work, the money that they make, they must enjoy it first. So you finish working, first thing you do, you come out of the bank and you go on in the bar. Start drinking. The barman's smart, you know. So he put some machines in the bar. You understand? He put some machines all over the bar. And you now go in and you start drinking. And then you get attracted to the machine. So you start to gamble too. In the evening, you start, well, when you start losing, you believe, well, I had to make back my money because you see, I had to go home with something. So soon enough, you, you gamble. And soon enough, you have nothing. You're going home to your wife and children with nothing. And you expect that you get a meal when they come. You understand? And there are other men who are abusers. They believe that their purpose is to dominate and control. So, wife and children home, having a nice time, no father home. From the time they hear the car stop. Everybody's scared because they don't know what he's coming with. He's coming to beat. He's coming to curse. He's coming to turn the house upside down because he believes that that is, that, is, that is how a man supposed to be. But God says to love. Love your wife. 
even as Christ loved the church. And that man who does that, he sometimes believes that that is love. You know, I, I had to beat you because I love you. And sad, sad to see some women believe that. They believe that if the husband do abuse them, they believe. I, I, I watch on TV there and a woman on the TV and they were interviewing her. They asked her, where is your husband? Well, not a, where's your, where, where the man you're living with? And she said, he going to look for a little skirts. Some skirts. You know, you know how they is, he going to look for a little skirt. And, and that, is, that, 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 is, that is the kind of life that some men live. But sad to say that none of them live in the plan of God. You see, God had a plan for mankind. And in the book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, it says, God made man in his own image. And like this, in the image of God, he made them, male and female. Again, I, don't want this, I want to say that he made them male and female. Not female and female. Not, not Adam and Steve. Male and female. And that is, way, that is God's plan. This sort of nonsense that they have going on. You see, every time you look at the TV, you see a man, especially those, those um, HIV um, ads. And a man and a man. You see, I see a woman in a club. A club, they playing music and they dancing. A whole set of women in there. So they're promoting this nonsense. But that is not God's plan. This morning, God had a plan for us. You know, when God created man, he, he put man in the garden. He didn't wait until man, he make man, and then one day, boy, what, what, what to do? Because man hungry now, man has nothing to eat. But he put man, he, he, he made a garden, and he put the man in the garden. And when he put the man in the garden, he had a purpose for doing that. Because he knew but the reason why he put man in the guy, put man in an earth was to subdue it and replenish. So man, he knew that man would have a half must. In order to be replenished, he must have a family. And so he put things in place. He didn't wait for the man to wander. He didn't put the man on earth and, and man had nothing to eat. He put man in a garden. He planted the garden first. He put man in the garden. So he provided for man. And in the same way, we as men are supposed to be providers. We're supposed to provide for our families. God didn't just put Adam in the garden. To, the, 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 the Bible tells you that the garden had fruit trees and Adam could have eaten from the fruit trees. But that wasn't the ultimate plan. Because if a man has to have a family, he has to work. He has to work and God knew that. He didn't put because later on is Adam alone today, but later on will be Adam and others. And in order for them to eat, Adam has to provide, he has to work. So he put Adam in the garden and for Genesis chapter and verse 15 says he placed man in the garden to, to he placed man in the, in, in the garden to keep it right now when we look at the word keep we see the word uh, not following the word but anyhow you know, he was supposed to cultivate when we look at the word keep we see the word cultivate and cultivate mean that he was supposed to prepare the ground for planting. So when, my, when God put the fruit, he, put, he had man there and he, he, gave you, he gave you fruit. You have things to eat. But in, that was just in the interim. Because man had to provide for his family. So man had to work. So while he was eating from the tree, he had to plant the ground. While he was waiting for the crops to grow, he only eat from there. But when he put his crops go, he never he put a dashina plant in a yam, a tanya, whatever in the ground. He had to wait for it to grow, so he had something to eat. God provided that. And af 
after when 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 he after when his crop grow, he would have to use whatever he planted. You're watching at the Bible from a just like that, and you see God put man on the earth and he put him in the garden. You would think that man was just placed there. Adam had all Adam had it easy. He had to just eat, probably prune the trees, lie down and sleep, but that is not it. He had to work. And as men, we ought to work this morning. I, I, I can't help but you might hear me talking about my own father a little bit because he wasn't perfect, but I believe he followed that plan that God had. Not the entire thing, but most of it. You see, my father was a man with 11 children. I being the very last. And when I say the very last, I mean the very last because I probably had the biggest space between all of them. I, I, when I was born, my sister before me would have been six years. She's five and a half years older than me. So I was not expected. My mother wasn't expecting me. <laughs> I said, no, no joke. My mother wasn't expecting me. The same when I was born, my mother, when she found out that she was pregnant, she used to cry. And when I was born, my father's cousin, who lived just about six houses away, she took me because she was living in a, you know, my people were living in a house. They were living in a house with probably two bedrooms. Imagine you have a house with two bedrooms and just a living room, a small house. And you have 11 children. But by the time I was born, probably three or four of them had left already. And you have 11 children to take care of. Right? So... It was e I think it was easy for my father to say, well, if my cousin wanted to take me, no problem, you go ahead. Because we weren't living far apart. Right? So I could go home every day. I would see them every day. But I didn't sleep there. I didn't go to school from there. And uh, when I look at my father, I would see that this man was a, he was a mason. He was a foreman on the, with the ministry of works and he would leave home every morning jump on his two wheel Mercedes Benz and ride to wherever they sent him if he, he was living in Kunapia they sent him to Kuva he would get up early and go to Kuva they sent him to Karani same thing but when he come home in the evening brother we had animals we tend the animals working all the time working on weekends, he was a mason. He would make blocks for the house that he planned to build. You understand? Later on, he, he purchased a piece of land from the same cousin that, 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 that was I was living by. So we came, used those blocks after to build a house. So we became next door neighbors. And so he, he never, never, I never see my father one day out of work. If he took holidays, he woke in still. Right? And that is what God, when God put Adam in the garden, he put Adam to work. Right? And beside that, Adam had to prepare for when he get a wife. You see, sometimes we, we are a bit hurry as young men. We decide to get our wife before we're ready. And that is, a, that is a recipe for disaster. You understand? But Adam had to prepare. God made Adam. He had to plant the ground. He had to prepare for when he got a wife. Beside that, Adam had a relationship with God. You see that God would make animals out of the ground. He bring them to Adam. And Adam had to name them. For Adam and God had a relationship before he, you, you didn't even hear about Eve. Adam and God had a relationship, and we too, as men, ought to have a relationship with God before we go looking for wife. You understand? So when, 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 when we'll be look at Adam's life, no Eve. I'm saying to you today, Eve is for when you're ready to leave, because the Bible says. A man should leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So Eve is for when you're ready. 
Not when you're in your mother's house and you in here, don't have a job. But you're looking for wife. You understand? Also, I'm advising young men today that they ought to. You, you, you know somewhere down the road you would need a wife, you would need a, you would have a family. Make yourself, educate yourself. Your parents providing for you, you're getting just three square meals, learn to do something. You might not be academically inclined, get a, learn to do a trade. Make yourself marketable because somewhere down the road you, would have, you want to have a family and you don't want to have a family struggling. You understand? You see, <laughs> one day, it just brings me remember my memory one day, uh, there's a guy who sells a little knife and little, um, sells some glue and, and um, these things, um, lighters and them kind of thing outside price. Yeah, a little bag on his back. And sometimes I would just patronize him. I'd buy a little knife, a little pack of glue, a, a stove lighter or something from him. And one day, Jade and I, we went to Price Mart. And coming out, he in the car park, he in the car park looking, he said, Uncle! I said, yeah. He said, that is your daughter? I said, yeah. He said, boy, that is a good girl for me. But boy, that probably was the fastest no that ever come out of my mouth. Because you struggling. I could see you struggling. But you want to you want to take my daughter to struggle with you. It's only the union. That's what the union say. The union motto is we here. We, we, we committed to the struggle. I ain't committed my daughter to no struggle. The union connect is they, 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 they committed to the struggle. Not my, I not committing my daughter to no struggle. You, you learn to do something better. You learn to, to provide for yourself before you look to, you look to interfere with some people's daughter and get yourself in trouble. Right? Again, you know, I, 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 I um, had to have to admire my father because as a young man growing up, you know, he would mind animals, and when we he used to mind, we had chickens, we had we had um, pigs, we had cows, and these things he would just mind and sell to make ends meet. He was also able to purchase lands. Right? My mother told me we, where I'm living there right now. They paid four hundred dollars per acre of land at that time, and she said. In order to be able to pay for that land, they had to, they, uh, many days they ate what they call yam and salt. In order, well, when they say salt, they mean salt, butter or something else. But they, 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 just had, they had to do what they had to do because they were looking at the big picture. They were looking down the road. You know, we have children. We have children and we want when we depart from here we must leave them with something right all i could say to you today most of us got a piece of land i live on one on a piece right there. eight of us there even some of his grandchildren was able to get land from my father and in the same way that is that, that, is, the, that is what god wants us to do he says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. I believe my father was a good man. Right? Again, you see, when we look at Adam, we see that God put Adam in the garden and Adam had to plant. And Adam, when we look after he, when he saw Eve, you know, he said, the Bible tells you to love your wife. You see, Adam was, when Adam saw Eve, it was like love at first sight. Because he said, one time, you remember God put him to sleep. And he wake out, out of, when he wake him out of the sleep, he see Eve. I don't know how he know that a, a, a bone was taken from him. But he said, bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of me. Right? And so Adam 
that was Lord love at first sight, Adam, like he couldn't catch himself. <laughs> but but I don't know how some men you could get a wife and then decide to <laughs> boy, beat. Right? That was not God's plan. Also, as a father, you should teach your children to work. Encourage your children to work. We see that Cain and Abel were Adam's children. Adam, in the Bible, he had to be a farmer. He planted the ground. Cain and Abel, they were both farmers. One crop farm, one food crop, one animal, female animal. And despite the outcome of what they, they, they their outcome in the end, their father had to teach them to work. They had to work. And same way, as a boy, my father taught me to work. You see, when I, he, when we, my, 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 my assignment was to look after the, the cows. And I would have to get up. I have to, I'm in secondary school. My regular waking hours was between 4 and 4.30 every morning. I had to go to get up. Sometimes I walk across. My father when I see my father there with Canley or the Baptist. He there with a candle and a Bible reading every morning. So he this candle and his Bible. Right? So my father looked to God every day. Right? I saw that. Then I when I, I would have to attend to the cows, he taught me how to to to, 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 to work. I would have to get up in the morning, go, go across, milk the cows, take the milk to the depot, sell it, go back home, get ready for school. In the evening, come home, get something to eat, go get grass, come back bringing the cows' milk again. I had to work. I know, I know what it means to work. I, up to today, I'm still working. You see, some men believe that work was punishment is punishment afraid work like like i don't know but work is never punishment work was before sin god told adam god had adam working before he sinned work only became harder after man's sin because you see god told adam he'd put thorns and thistles in the ground by the sweat of his brow he would eat bread so work became harder but work was always before, before punishment. Work is not punishment, right? Sometimes we, we, when we look at God and we look at God, the way he treated Adam. See, Adam sinned and God had to, he had to be punished. So he was punished. He was put out of the garden. God made that things a little harder for both him and his wife. But when we look at, the, we look at God's love, God's love for mankind. After Adam sin, he, he and his wife, they, they sow fig leaves. And they, that is what they cover themselves with it because they, they now realize that they were naked. But God, we know that God killed an animal and we know the significance of that because the Bible says that without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. God himself shed the blood of an animal. It was like if God was saying to Adam and Eve, fig sleeve, fig leaves, fig leaves, that ain't good enough for my children. He gave them, he covered them with, with the skins of an animal. The fig leaf would not have been conducive to the weather. It would not have lasted. But God in his love for mankind covered them with something that would, would be able to to, 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 to protect them during the cold. Right? Same way I think I keep telling you about my father, my, <laughs> my big brother. My father sent him to learn a trade. And he decided, he alone, you know, long time, when you go to learn a trade, you didn't used to, they didn't used to pay you to learn. You had to pay them to teach you. So my father would give him the money, he bought him a bicycle, and give him the money to go 
to learn this trade. But he instead, he went and learned the lime. <laughs> so, so what he did, he would take the money, but never go. Soon enough, my father found out that he was working with the work department as a, those people who cut last the road and clean the drain. And that probably, my father probably, he, he didn't like that at all. He probably felt that wasn't good for his son. So for years, this man, he had a, would get a wife. He didn't marry the other. He had a woman, he had children. And for years, my, I probably think my, this thing was bothering my father. And finally, one day, my father found out that the guy who drove the, 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 those big heavy rollers, he was about to resign, and there was nobody to replace him. My father took his money, called my brother, sent him to learn to operate the roller. And after, the, when the guy resigned, my brother became the Ubi operator because he was, my father paid and made sure that he had something better. You understand? And same way, God wants us to always have something better. Even when he, when Adam and Adam sinned, he didn't just, uh, he didn't abandon him. He didn't abandon them. He still kept, he still made sure they were clothed. Even the children, you see that God still communicated with them because he asked Cain, where is thy brother Abel? He was, he was, so that tells you he was still communicating with them. He didn't abandon them. And the same way we as fathers shouldn't abandon our children. So this morning, I know I'm a bit short, but in closing, I'm advising fathers to abandon your children. Those fathers who probably only know their children by number and not name, probably from some of them it might be too late. But for some, but those who believe that they could still make amends, Go and apologize to your children. Let them know that they're sorry and try to make amends. Try to have a relationship with their children. Those abusers and those who feel that they, 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 they could do what they want. Tell your wife, sorry. Tell your children your story. First to begin, try to get to know God. Because no abuser, I don't think any abuser really knows God. I don't know, I know for certain that any man who has children all over the place and don't take care of them, he certainly don't know God. So my, I, I, my, my advice to you men today, take this away from with me. Get to know God. Get to know God. And learn to love your wife. Learn to love your children. Make sure you provide for your children, for your family, so that they, when they, they, they get, when they are ready to have a family, they will know that they have to provide for their own family. So this morning, I want to thank God for enabling me to share this short message with you. So that's the end. Of <laughs> thank you.